Signore e signori, è qui da noi lui, il Golden Boy, il Control Freak, Cliff Bezinski. All right, I guess I'm the only one that, that's going to talk to you. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. So, how are you? How was your I'm, day? I'm good. Uh, I got up at noon because I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, my wife and I, are, uh, we're night owls, right? Okay. Uh, you know, we stay awake till three, four in the morning every night. Uh, playing games, watching movies. Uh, Match made in heaven. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, we don't have any kids. So, and, uh, you know, I don't want any because kids are, are, are parasitic sociopaths. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're, fi we're fiscally slash financially comfortable enough to live a, yeah. a very co comfortable lifestyle. And I basically just get to have a dance party uh, with my wife in our kitchen at 2 a.m. every night. And, you know, she's my best friend. And uh, it's actually fun. Fun fact is uh, she's actually started doing the Twitch thing herself. Yeah. It's, uh, Twitch. That's how I found you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you trolled right. me hard. <laughs> you didn't think I'd actually, like, reach out, right? Like, No, I thought I thought you were your agent because that's what your wife told me. No, no. It's, uh, you know, I do have an agent, but I'm, there's a reason my, my memoir is called Control Freak. Control Freak, right. Because, uh, you know, I like to take control of things. And, uh, you know, I'm, I believe all eyeballs are good these days because I do have that book to sell. Got my dog comic book. Yes, I want to talk about that. That's the, the big one is coming out in two days, right? Uh, no, it's uh, April 23rd, actually. Oh, 23rd. Okay. Yeah. So tomorrow. No, the, dude, it's, it's February right it's now. It's February. I'm, I'm stupid, dude. <laughs> I'm working like a mule lately. You look like you're in a, like a wine cellar over there with that ceiling. But that's my house. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's an old one. That's so beautiful. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try to not rapid fire, but kind of kind of move along because th they sent me a shitload of questions for you. Oh, your uh, your followers. Yeah. Okay. So I want to start with developer, game designer, Broadway producer, comedian, book creator, and apparently singer too. Is there anything you don't do? um cheat on my wife yeah <laughs> okay moving right along <laughs> well real quick the thing about like my my diverse uh, series of interests is that um a i like to learn new things yeah and b i like money and so the thing is is you know learning you know like you know how, like how stand-up comedy works you know I, I go to the, our local comedy club about once uh, once a week i've become friends with a lot of the people in that community And then, you know, uh, the Broadway shows I've been involved with, I really believe in. And just, uh, you know, oh, you forgot the restaurants too, by the way. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. We have a, 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 the Raleigh Beer Garden out here in North Carolina. And uh, it has uh, 400 beers on tap. Which wow. Is, uh, Guinness World I Beer actually Beer. saw the pictures. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally forgot, but I saw the pictures. That looks so yeah, cool. It, it, it's pretty amazing to go there uh, and to, to sing on Mondays and to... Uh, You know, I'm not, I don't really have a good voice. I just, karaoke is just about going for it. Okay. Right? We're not gonna take it. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> no, please please clip, clip, it. everyone clip. We're not gonna take it anymore. <laughs> anymore. Right? Adesso ti sente, eh, Pierpaolo, secondo oh, me, perché ti sento io. And then doing, <laughs> yeah. doing like, uh, you know, hip hop, like, this here's a jam for all the fellas, try to do what those ladies tell us, get shot down because you're overzealous, play hard to get females, get jealous, right? Uh, that, that's I can do it. <laughs> I can rap. Well, the thing <laughs> is, is I'm, I'm, sometimes we get a really good crowd at karaoke nights, and I realize these people are all buying pretzels and beer, and they're essentially paying me to see me sing, sing poorly. <laughs> <laughs> that's the dream right <laughs> it's it's like self-perpetuating motion at that point um, <laughs> and, and I, i finally got i finally got my wife to go up there uh, on my birthday my birthday was a couple of days ago and yeah and she she doesn't karaoke she's very shy wait how old are you uh i'm 49 now 49 okay yeah i moisturized um <laughs> <laughs> Ha detto che si dà le creme per quelli che non hanno capito e in caso la I non abbia non abbia tradotto. I was explaining because the AI might might not have catched that the the moisturizing thing. Yeah, I learned it from my black friends because they they get that cocoa butter up in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Um, but it, but my wife actually went up and sang, and you know, as um, th- that was my birthday gift this year, and she grabbed a bunch of girlfriends, and they all sang the Pokemon theme song together. Okay, weren't you singing like Spice Girls? I saw a tweet. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Um, I was in uh, New Orleans uh, with my friend uh, John, who works at Nintendo, and his lovely wife uh, Colette, and uh, we went on stage and did, uh, you know, "Spice Up Your Life." I think that was it. Um, yeah, she's she's his his wife's this lovely um, uh, blonde-haired girl from from England, so she has the English accent, and of course, she loves the Spice Girls, and she looks yep. like a Spice Girl. But that's uh, <laughs> that was in New Orleans. Uh, we went for Mardi Gras. We, we do Mardi Gras every year. It's I amazing. have a question about a different tweet, and then I'm going to go on with the with the chat questions because otherwise they're going to kill me. Um, there was a picture that, in, that needs some explanation that I saw. There was you getting shot in the ass with a Nerf gun. So what was the what was the situation there? That was uh, part, of the, part, of, part of the part of the part of the I can't remember what costume the guy was wearing. I think it was like a chicken or something. It was a chicken. Yeah, it was a, a duck. It was a yeah, duck. duck. Yeah. So the idea is that, you know, I became friends with some of the local stand-up comedians and I expressed interest, you know, because, you know, again, it comes down to community. And um, they do this thing about once a month called the Comedy Game Show, where it's kind of like, you know, those classic 80s game shows like Press Your Luck or The Price yeah. is Right. And, uh, you know, so basically, you know, they, they take three comedians with a host We go up on stage and they we do like you know qu- question and answer you know and like this the, the whole sequence is called press press your duck and they had this like duck you had to hit on the table okay and uh you know it, it, they did like q a and you try to make it funny and things like that and uh so, but then you know the duck came out and I, i got a question wrong and so he had to shoot me with the nerf gun so i, I <laughs> okay so it's punishment basically <laughs> so i mean you know to, to make it funny i presented my butt <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, 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 think, I think I, I think I still have that ner- dar- nerf dart stuck in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, the question on everyone's mouth is, are you coming back to game development? Uh, I'm d- currently doing some consulting. Uh, okay, speak- can we know about with who and for what? I can't really, I can't really say at this time. Um, you know, it's, it's Gears of War. I mean, <laughs> it's, 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 it's just not, wink man. twice, wink twice. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, well, what what pisses me off is the fact that, you know, I've said multiple times that, you know, I'd be happy to consult, you know, yep. send, send me the stories, tell me the build. And what I, the quote that I said in another interview was if Microsoft was smart, they just yep. bring you bring, bring me on just for the PR alone. Yes. Like, and that's the thing is, sorry, burping up lunch. Don't worry. The, the thing is, is um, IGN took just if Microsoft was smart, they bring Cliff on board. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and th- there's That's this term the headline. <laughs> well, it used to be the, the term used to be clickbait and now it's rage bait. Yeah. Because the internet is driven by engagement, engagement, engagement. Yep. Right. And so, you know, what happens is they post, you know, a, a line like that and then people don't read the article and then they go straight to the comments. And that's why a certain corner of the internet hates my fucking guts, to be honest. I, I understand. I'm, we're trying to change for, for as much as we can the, the, the landscape. This is our mission, This is our mission um, Cliff. <laughs> because mission. Like, it's, it's a there's a reason why I, I manage these, these things. Yeah. And it's because I hate the internet. Like, I, I don't need clickbait, clickbait there. And, and I'm, I'm, I feel free. Did you guys see the Borderlands movie trailer? Yeah. No. I did. Oh, today. I, today. I think okay. it looks fun. You know, yeah. I mean, the one thing is, I think they I should be. Tweet. <laughs> they, they should, about it. <laughs> well, it's it's not cool to like things, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I, I, you know, I, I watched the trailer. I'm like, that looks that looks fun. The casting is unique. You know, it, maybe certain characters, certain actors aren't necessarily perfect for the characters from the game. You know, but yeah. you have to get a wiggle, get some some name brand recognition in there for an unknown IP for the majority of the muggles out there. Yeah. Um, my one note is, uh, you know, I've really uh think they should use that um you know ain't no rest for the wicked uh, song <laughs> from the original. Yeah. and some dude actually edited it uh with that and it 99 it works it, it yeah played great um and every also the people in a lot of the comments and you know you're not supposed to read the comments but yeah on. but you do yeah it's like when you, when you have bad milk you're like here smell this milk you know 
<laughs> and when and, there's uh, a thousand good comments and one bad comment, you're gonna focus on that till the end of time. I, I, I call it the bad peanut. You're sitting there yeah, eating yeah. peanuts. Yeah. And then you yeah. get one nasty one. Like, oh Jesus. <laughs> and uh the thing is, is uh, you know, everyone's like confused, like how come it's not Claptrap's original voice? Why is it Jack Black? Oh, God. Like, well, there's a long story to that. Yeah. Uh, you know, the guy who voiced Claptrap got in a, a fight with Randy Pitchford, yeah. the guy who owns and runs Gear Gearbox. And uh, he essentially, the, the, he either quit or was fired. Yeah. Uh, I'm still, I'm still good friends with both of them, right? But you know, that that happens in business, you know, and sometimes you know you have to recast. And uh, you know, I think Jack Black's voice sounds perfectly fine. It's you know, they, it could have been a little, little more heavily modulated, but you know, Claptrap looks great. Uh, they, I just think, I think it looks like a, good, a really, really good time. And it, it's um, also, it's also a little bit of a name. I mean, it's Jack Black. Yeah, so exactly. It helps. But I mean. It, you know, the movie came out. Nothing Jack Black can do. The, well, the, the, the movie came out looking looking like you know Mad Max meets Guardians of the Galaxy, and I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, I'll be there. I'll be there day so, one. To 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 close the loop. The 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 answer is there is something cooking. You're consulting for something. Yeah, I'm consulting on stuff, but it's not okay. gears, unfortunately. All right, all right. Um, what about the gears movie TV show? What's the deal there? No, nothing. It's, it's nothing as in NDA or you can't you're, no or... I, I honestly I'm not involved at all uh nobody's, oh. re no, nobody, nobody's reached out and the funny thing is is fans of the last of us you know which turned out great the TV series uh you know because Neil Druckmann was involved yeah. right and you look at you know the fallout trailer and it says you know right up front Todd Howard yeah right and it's like you know that gives nerd cred to the the, the diehard the core yes. fans who are going to be there regardless day one and then you you you, you like span out to the masses right yeah. you know and introduce but you were worlds. consultant at one point on that or what uh, yeah well when i was at epic uh yeah we had new line cinema involved we had legendary yes. legendary pictures involved uh temple hill productions involved and it kind of collapsed upon itself because there's just too many fucking cooks in yeah. the kitchen it's like the old saying when someone says we're making a movie and we have 12 screenwriters, so it's going to be great. And it's like, no, no. <laughs> that's that's so, that's actually a bad sign. So yeah. let's play let's play fantasy. If you had carte blanche with the if you were the consultant or if you were in charge of the Gears movie or TV show, which actors would you pick? The cast. Uh, I I still you know I used to say back in the day that I don't think a wrestler would be a good fit, but okay. I think Bat Batista for Marcus. Would, would be perfect. Uh, He's a huge and, fan too. Oh, I know. He, he he actually did a video of him in the armor and everything. Yeah. You know, he's spitting, spitting image of Marcus. And I think they put him in as an alternate skin in one of the recent Gears games. Yeah, they did. Um, they didn't in Gears 5. And he's proven his acting chops from, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy oh, yeah. to Blade, Blade Runner to Knock at the Cabin. Yes. Um, and that, the thing you think you realize is, you know, yes, wrestlers are amazing athletes. Yes, they do get hurt. But yes, it is scripted. And yes, they are acting though, and yeah. they have, you have to be charismatic in order to to do that role. Um, yeah. uh, you know, for Anya, uh, you know, of course, Margot Robbie, because uh, yeah. she she can do no wrong. Because uh, the Barbie movie was was hilarious. Um, did you guys have a chance to see that? Wouldn't there be somebody else more, you know, more Anya style? I mean, I like unknowns also. You know, there's actually a woman. Isn't named... Anya inspired by somebody? Yeah. Okay. Uh, by, my, by my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the I mean, thing is, I mean, she uh, could play it. She could play her. My wife has a lot of talents. Acting is not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's this show on Netflix called Ginny in Georgia. And my wife not and familiar. I, you, you, you guys know the concept of a laminated list? Uh, like, Nope. It's celebrities if you're married like you know you, there's like three or four people that if you were happen to have a chance to sleep with them okay you, you, okay. you, gotta, you, you gotta pass on it okay. okay one one of the ones at the top of my list is this uh, actress named uh, Brienne Howey and she's on that show uh, Ginny in Georgia um, and it's about this woman who's a grifter uh, she lives in a small town and she's okay. like hooking, hooking up with a bunch of the dudes and my friend Scott Porter uh, who's a big gamer he was on Friday Night Lights actually plays the mayor in the town then I'm like, oh, yeah, you get to, you got to, you got to kiss her, Scott. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's I, I mean, it's, it's acting. But I, I, you know, I, you know, somebody was suggesting John Berenthal as Dom, but 
I think mm. it's I think it'll be important to have an actual like Latino yeah uh, in the, in the role mm. and uh you know Lester Spate uh as Coltrane or possibly um he's a little bit older these days um I actually became friends with Terry Crews of all people because okay. we have the same literary agent because he wrote his memoir I wrote my memoir and then my agent mentioned that you know he represents me and ter terry was in his office like oh i love his work blah 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 and so <laughs> terry cruz and i are like sending photos of each of us reading each other's memoir on text messages back and forth that's um, pretty cool I, I think i think he could do he could do a really cool uh coal train and you know somebody like a uh, chris evans for uh baird Ooh. i think wow. would be cool oh yeah but he, he might be too big after all that marvel money you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I'm going. I'm going to go back to the Microsoft Gears and whatnot. Um, tell me if I'm wrong. During your final days at Epic, that's when you you introduced Fortnite, right? Yeah. I have, I know. I don't know if it's true, but uh, what I know is there wasn't a publisher back then. Like no. it wasn't just a trailer. It was actually a pitch to find a publisher. Well, Epic had. Good relationships with their our, all of our publishers, GT Interactive through through the years. Uh, you know, we worked with EA on Bulletstorm, even though they didn't market it enough. And then, uh, which is now remembered as a classic for the record. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, Microsoft did a great job with Gears. Uh, but you know, Tim saw where the puck was going, as Wayne Gretzky, the famous hockey player, once said. You know, go where the puck is going, not where the puck is. Yeah. And Ep Epic realized, in order to maintain their independence. They needed to figure out a way to get Fortnite out on their own, um, and so the thing is, is you know, it, it the, saved the world. The first version, Mark Rain told me, actually did fairly well for them. Okay. But then when they pivoted to Battle Royale, that's when yeah, it just exploded and became. I, you know, I hate Fortnite, by the way. I'm sorry, but I hate it. I <laughs> my, my my wife and I call it the F word. <laughs> no, I'll tell you why. I was I was editor in chief of the Fortnite magazine, and oh, when you okay. when you make a monthly magazine of a game that they patch every five fucking minutes, like <laughs> you you end up we gotta go to print. Well, they just patched it. Half of the magazine is obsolete now. We gotta rewrite yeah. everything in twenty four hours. So never again. I hate that game. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, the the thing is, is uh, you know, I respect what their success. You know, I respect yeah. what they're doing, but there's. The thing is, is, you know, when I was at Epic, I was an employee. I had yeah. some, some, I had some stock options, et cetera. <laughs> and, you know, they, they, were, they were very generous with the bonuses, you know, hence, you know, I had two Lamborghinis at one point. And the thing is, you have so, one spare. <laughs> what's, what's that? <laughs> you have one spare. One yeah, spare well, Lamborghini. No, it was, it was, it was his and hers. Could be that it was for him and for I, I, had, I, I, had the, I had the I had the Aventador and my wife had the uh, LP560 Spider. Right. Okay. Uh, go so we we we, we go we would, like take it to like fast food drive throughs together. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, you know, uh, I eventually, you know, realized like I'm not trying to impress anybody anymore. You yeah. know, uh, it's, uh, they're they're beautiful cars. Uh they're extraordinarily well made. Of, of course, lightning fast. Um, but in the, they'll always have a place in my heart, but you know, for me, when it comes to money, I like things that gain value as yeah. opposed to, you know, having to spend, you know, $5,000, yeah. $5,000 on a tire. If a tire gets a nail in it, you know, and then I have to, I'd have to ship it off to uh, a place that's an hour and a half away. And it's just, it was just a pain in the ass at that point. To be honest, my wife and I ra rarely actually use our, we, have, we, we still have two Mercedes, his and hers. And uh, we we rarely drive these days. Like, is that, is that actually the license plate? Uh, no, m mine says Phoenix. Okay. Wow. Hers, her uh, F E N I X. Hers says Epona. Okay, e like that horse in in. Yeah, but, but it's like, but it's it's spelled like Ponage, you know, like P W N, like. Oh, oh. Epona. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> So listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna get back a little bit to the pitching and and Fortnite and whatnot. Oh yeah, do you, sorry. Do you think no no don't worry? It's just that I, in the interest of time, I'm I'm just gonna try to speed run and then we can shoot the shit as much as you want. I, I I'll keep you here all night. I have no problem with that. I know you have a hockey game to go to. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the big thing about Fortnite is you know I'm not I don't see a dime off of it. And okay. there's an there's an image in my book of Tim Sweeney and I, and it says 
one of these people is a multi-millionaire the other is a multi-billionaire oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but do you feel like pitching has changed pitching games well, uh, the th well the thing is real quick to double back on Fortnite for a second yeah. the, f the f word is that it actually most of it came out of a game jam that they had at epic yeah uh, where they said let's just see what new stuff we can come up with because you know mike caps our old president said gears might not always be cool and it's not necessarily about gears being cool because in my heart of hearts gears will always be cool but you know you gotta get the get the you have to get the youth right and Fortnite tapped into you know the the young crowd yeah. you know I'll, I'll go to the mall and i'll see a kid wearing a Fortnite shirt right yeah but again, I, I don't see a dime off of it, and so you know it, it is what you it is. Off a little bit. Uh, you know, it took me a, a while to get comfortable with that, and so I have a, a sign hanging downstairs that says Com "Comparison is the thief of joy." So, True. Okay. You know, just accept the fact that I, you know I have what I have, and it's you know it's motivated me to move on to other stuff. Yeah. Do you do you play it? Do you play Fortnite? Absolutely not. Okay, thank God. <laughs> so anyway, no. What I was asking is, the second I saw Marcus Phoenix in there dancing, I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, get the fuck out with that shit. Fair, fair. So what I was asking is, do you think pitching games has changed, like as as the industry moved to a more corporate structure, and and well, what's the difference between back in the day and now? I could do a TED talk on this. Because oh, please do. <laughs> everybody, like, you look at how much it costs to make a AAA game these days. And then, you know, the price point is still 60 to $70. You know, you look at it, you know, game, a big game costing 100, 150 million to make, then 50 plus million to market. And then you want your, you know, employees, you know, your, to get paid a decent amount, you know, have health plans, you yep. know. Like at least they don't have to have offices now because COVID nuked that. Glad I did did not invest in commercial real estate. Um, and so when it comes to pitching, though, uh, publishers want a safe bet. They want an established intellectual property. They want an established world. And so you know, oh, Batman. Everyone knows Batman. You know, like you know, Mortal Kombat. They're just gonna keep making Mortal Kombat's. You know, yeah. and then they, they get like guest star characters and things like that because that's like all the rage in the last like eight years. Um, you know, the Terminator showing up, you know, yep. the, pre the Predator shows up. Now it's and, Peacemaker uh, and the guys from Invincible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, you know, they those blew up. But the thing was, is, you know, when it comes to, you know, Peacemaker, Peacemaker was an obscure character. It was a, a obscure comic book, you know, but uh, James Gunn made Suicide yep. Squad a thing with all these. He took all these misfits, these ridiculous characters and made a really, really cool movie. And then you made you know, polka dot man cool. I mean, it's not exactly. easy. <laughs> you know, the sharks voiced by Sylvester oh, yeah, Stallone yeah. was great. Yeah. And uh, and then but then John Cena did the the TV series, and he made this this big lug likable. You know, when when the CG eagle hugs him, you know, I caught some feels. Oh my god, yeah. And that's the thing is, it takes a visionary like that to take an obscure character and make something work like that. And that's why James has steadily risen up. And, you know, people don't, a lot of the uh, hardcore fans, comic fans don't like him. And, you know, so a lot of times James Gunn is trending on Twitter. And, and for the record, you know, I know him. He's a friend. I've, I've hung out with him. And he's, uh, he's very talented, but he has great, what we call a shit filter. He knows how to spot good things. And he knows okay. how to make things, he knows how to make IP have heart. So back to the pitch thing, you know, you need to have somebody who's established, who's a visionary, who could come up with an idea, like... A dog superhero <laughs> and uh that that could easily be adapted into a video game and uh otherwise they're just going to go with the we name make a the, petition cliff <laughs> well they, they they just go with the names they know right yeah because it's, it's 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 like hedging their bets on wall street right you're going with blue chip stocks as opposed to this new startup uh do you, you, know. do you have you ever thought about crowdfunding a game uh, it's kind of hard to crowdfund when I'm known for having owned two Lamborghinis. <laughs> that, true, true. Well, and that's the thing. Is, uh, it, well, the thing, the thing about crowdfunding is it's not ju it's not just about the money. It's about it establishes your brand, but also it gives you a, a built-in community from the get-go. Yeah. Mm. Like by Baldur's Gate. Everything exactly. Everything comes down to community. 
yeah. right? And, you know, which 90, 99% of the times, every community winds up turning toxic in its life cycle. It's like, you know, my, my wife and I tried to get into League of Legends a while back. And it's like, no, you should go mid. Don't choose that character, you fucking idiot. It's like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's the, uh, the thing is, you, you know, that community, though, if you, if you maintain a positive community, you know, then that's, you know, you wind up with, you know, loyal fans. But, you know, it goes back to Borderlands. You know, the, the, the diehard Borderlands fans are like, oh, that, I don't like the casting on yeah. that character. And you're just like, dude, you got to have a little bit of wiggle room when you're adapting a game to a TV series or a film. You know, it's like there, there were people online complaining that uh, the girl who played Ellie in The Last of Us wasn't pretty enough. I'm like, dude, yeah. she's like she's like 13. Get the fuck out of here, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's one point in the line when community thinks they owe you. And this you is have not to be, positive. You have to listen to the community, respond to them, but there's a threshold there where you can't let the inmates run the asylum. True. Because then True. you wind up with what, you know, feels like fan service to a fault right let, let 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 them let them have their say tell them tell them you hear them but they the fans also need to trust the powers that be the creatives that are making what they like so much why they're there in the first place so yeah. it's 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 a complicated thing yeah. so uh, on that note i want to ask you how do you feel about the moniker gears of woke we, since we speak about communities turning <laughs> turning their backs and shit like that, I I, I heard you was really upset about that. I, well, that, that 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 tweet got like half a million views. Um, first off, I hate the way the term "woke" has been weaponized. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, diversity and inclusion are good things. Yeah. And I, I said this when I had Bosky because at the end of the day, regardless of your politics, you know, people of all races and genders and sexualities uh play you want their fucking money yeah yeah know? and if they feel represented then it's like you know when black panther blew up and it, it's kind of like you know suddenly hollywood was like wait black people go to the movies yeah so, <laughs> go <yeah>. figure <laughs> have, have you ever heard of tyler perry and medea like <laughs> chris tucker like hello i'll never forget coming out of uh uh the avengers uh when thanos did the snap yeah. And Black Panther is just gone, and I'm coming out of the theater, and there's this uh, this uh, family, uh, a mom and a mom and a dad, and two little black kids, and the black kids were in tears, man. And I, I walked up to him and was like, "Don't worry, he'll be back." <laughs> and, 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 Spoiler. <laughs> but, then, but then, rest in peace. Sadly, uh, Chadwick Boseman died yeah. of cancer. Yeah. So now I feel like the asshole. <laughs> you lied to those kids. <laughs> well, hey, get your col get your colonoscopies, guys. I've had two. Wow. So, I, I was it. <laughs> you know, the, the the hardest thing is the prep. You know, you have to drink this like completely disgusting fluid, and then you basically just shit everything out over the next like two hours. Okay. But the worst part is the hunger because you're not allowed to eat. But the other thing is the next morning. Because they usually do the shit at like eight, and again, night owl here. You have to take more of it and shit out whatever's left in you, and uh, <laughs> and then you go in and they 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 put put, put you under with like propofol, which is I'm, I'm, I was so scared the first time because that's what killed Michael Jackson because he couldn't yeah. sleep, he couldn't sleep. <laughs> but next thing you know, they tell you to count down from hundred. You're like ninety nine, ninety. Yeah. And then you wake up and you fart a lot, and then you go get a chicken. <laughs> And then you go get a go get a chicken sandwich. So, no, Cliff, I I picked this. This is uh, Aperol Spritz. <laughs> oh, uh, Aperol's good, man. So, um, I'm I'm gonna circle back again to the pitching thing. Um, there's a quote by you that says, "I could pitch the most amazing idea to anybody back when I was at Epic towards the end, and they'd be like, I 'I don't buy it.'" I want to know what what was that like? Um, like it's it's shitty. But I, I, well, when I'm, I was pitching something internally, right? Yeah. Or, or, or to publishers, like, can you clarify? You said during my final days at Epic, I could pitch the most amazing idea to anybody, and they'd be like, "I don't buy it." Game developers are cynical. They what they they like basically like oh so it's just th this meets this. It's like, yeah, it's like, you know, Fortnite is fucking PUBG that's cartoony. Like, yeah. 
but with some building that and yeah. that's that's all you need right and i just you know once once tencent invested in epic i realized that uh i had enough money that i didn't have to argue with programmers anymore yeah i'll never mm. forget when i had i had the idea of the locusts not being aliens i wanted them to be from the underground which turned out to be a masterful stroke thank you very much <laughs> and uh I remember saying it and saying this to like one of the really smart programmers. He's like, I don't buy it. I'm like, why not? He's like, how did they get there? I'm like, that's part of the fucking mystery, dude. Like, <laughs> we'll figure that out later. <laughs> yeah. Which eventually was revealed over the course yeah. of, you know, yeah. gears one through five. Um, and it also goes back to the fact that, you know, with gears four, I wanted the locust to have wings. You know, because okay. the, the idea was that, you know, they were from the underground, they were called grubs, you know, and you look at the, the life cycle, life cycle of a caterpillar. Yeah. yeah. It winds it's up getting it, the it, next it, step. Yeah. The, the chrysalis. Right. And so, you know, by getting rid of emulsion, the locust natural life cycle was able to continue. So, you know, because emulsion made the mutate so that you re re remove the, the mutagen and then basically they, they go into that dormant state with the crystals on them. And then eventually they all reemerge, giant wings. Wow. And the the, okay. the tagline was going to be the evolution. Exactly, but, but imagine you know like you're you're hanging out, and then they just come flying in. You know they come at you with cool. like you know like they, they could stab you with the wings, and you know you sh you shoot the holes in the wings, and you can see like the subdermal lighting on the wings. And then um, if they, they they try to retreat, they start flying away, and you, you shoot them more, and then right. So much could happen with that. And the tagline that it had was before they came from below. Now they come from above. Bam. And, Boom. Uh, <laughs> Game of the year. <laughs> and then Rod's just like, nah, job. Fuck, let, let, let's just do fuck. Let's just do fucking robots. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I have a demand. I'm a good so che so che... Well, well, Speaking about uh, pitching and publishing, I'm wondering, do you ever think about a, a very small little game in the game like Vampire Survivors, for example? Or uh, I think that maybe your mindset automatically goes towards a, a big project. Well, big I'll, 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 for the record, I love uh, Vampire Survivors. Yeah. I was hooked on that for like three weeks. Uh, it's so simple, but for some reason, they just yeah. it just got its hooks in me. Uh, the, the, the the one thing where you're like playing is like just the tree that just like sits yeah. there. Yep. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, dead simple graphics. But the thing is, is what you know. Once it, it, what that game mastered, I'll get I'll get to your your, the, your question. Is the cycle of empowerment that a good video game does? You start off, you know, it's the hero's journey, right? You start off, you know, super weak, but by the end, when you get towards the, you know, the timer's going, you're just plowing through like the biggest enemies. Because you pick the right power ups and things like that, and uh, if I if I were to make a new video game, I do something very very simple. The, the, the only thing I play right now is my Switch. You know, like okay. I loved, I loved Celeste. I love Shovel Knight. Okay. I love like less is more for me. But my PlayStation Five is upstairs right now. I have not touched it. Right. I, I you know I, I play I play games on Steam as well. My biggest mistake with Boss Key, my own studio that I had, was I hired a bunch of AAA developers. And what I should have done was started off with a team of just 10 to 15 and made yeah. a first game that was just a cool little experience, right? And then once we got traction, we learned how to work together. If the game was making money and we had, you know, a steady income apart from our sugar daddy publisher, yeah. proceed yeah. to build a larger game and larger and then build the studio, right? Yeah. Uh, the thing is, is Lawbreakers took like nearly three years to make which you know every every time it popped up on the news uh gamers are like they're still working on that shit you know and we had like you know like six <laughs> alphas six alphas and betas and the problem there also is the fact that the people who were in the initial alphas and betas were that damn good and then so when the game finally came out we didn't have that big of a player base so the matchmaking couldn't properly work so the the newbies were getting completely decimated by the people who played the game yeah. months ago right because okay. the skill would just was, leave just unbalanced okay. exactly exactly and it wasn't just the typical you know fps mechanics you know we had some very unique things in there with you know shooting behind you variable oh. gravity things like that uh you know we didn't just have like the you know 
the mercy where you follow with the healing noodle, right? Like, and that's the thing is, you know, then people are like, it's just, a, it's an Overwatch clone. I'm like, oh, you really think, you, you know, we, we, we saw Overwatch and then we scrambled and, and put this together in a month. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, Jan. <Right. laughs> so, um, but the thing is, is that, yeah, it would be something small. Uh, you know, I really love indie games. You know, I love it. I love it when something unexpected breaks out. You know, I, I don't know what it costs to make, but the fact that Pal World uh, did so well, you know, yeah. it's like so it, it, my, the, my thing about did a good you know, marketing though. Focus oh, did, on uh, on Pals, but that's yeah, much well, more. Well, I mean, Poke, more Pokemon's a bazillion dollar franchise. You know, yes. you have an entire generation. You know, my wife, that's her generation. You know, she's a '90s girl. And the thing is, is, you know, ask yourself, you know, from a creative and a business standpoint, you know, what happens, you know, for, for me, it, well, from the power world people, what happens when the you know, people who love Pokemon grow up, you know, like Pokemon with guns and building and survival feels like a little bit Zelda like, right? Yeah. And my Makes thing about, sense. well, my thing about my dog comic is, you know, what happens with the kids who love Paw Patrol grow up a when they grow up? Yeah. You know, so, you know, there's, I think there's room for a badass dog superhero that could easily be translated into a video game yeah. that if that were to be the case, I would hope to be, of course, well, since I own the whole fucking thing, yeah. um, I would, Cliff, I think this is a special moment because we are, we were the first to play video games and now we grew up, we need yeah. new things. We yeah. are still here, still alive, still want to play. Sorry, well, the, 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 the Mario thing, accent. Well, the other, thing, <laughs> the other thing to keep in mind, you know, going back to engagement and all that stuff is the internet loves weird shit. Yep. And we live, we live in the world of Twitch streamers and YouTubers and TikTokers. And, you know, the more you can get some random kid to overact about some goofy feature in your game. I mean, PewDiePie's entire career was built on Slenderman. Oh, Mr. Slenderman, you're coming for me. Ha, ha, ha. And, you know, kids eat that shit up. And I tell my wife, you know, you know, she's, she's normally kind of like, hey, how's it going? You know, what's up? I'm like, overact, overact. You know, <laughs> please be, don't. Uh, please don't. <laughs> but it works. It works. Yeah. You, you go to YouTube and like the fucking thumbnails make me want to stab somebody in the dick. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the <whole thing. laughs> yes. The, the giant font. But, you know, as they say, kids, kids love that shit. And but I think I think it doesn't it doesn't really help the market though. Like I, when I see a game like what, what the fuck is the name? Only up, the the biggest asset flip ever made. It's you you have to climb this infinite thing of things. It's called Only Up, and it was huge last year. It was like a five dollar game, and it, it got in trouble because it was asset flipping. But people were reacting to it, and so it got big. And I'm like, there's nothing here. <laughs> there's literally nothing. Well, try working in AAA for 25 years and seeing something like that. You know, like uh, Quop became big. Uh, yeah. What's that game? You have the guy who's like in like the barrel and he has the pickaxe. Get it, getting like, over, get, getting over yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which was impossibly hard. But you know, there's also this community of like speed runners and people who yes. want to be punished. You know, like. You know, the, the whole uh, people who troll with Mario Maker levels that are just yeah. nearly impossible. Oh, yeah. You know, like uh, uh, Donkey, who's one of my favorite YouTubers. Uh, the thing is, he does really good content. He's fucking funny, right? And so, but then you have other people who just, just put stuff out there. And I'm just like, I, uh, if people say they're content creators, and I respect people who do good stuff. Like you look at uh, the cosplayer, Jessica Negri who's uh you know made a name for herself she's beautiful etc yeah. etc cetera, et cetera. she's got a great personality um <laughs> <laughs> and the thing she she, she yes yeah, she does she, she does her sexy photo shoots but you look at all, so much of the cosplay she does and it's fucking insane yeah. my wife my wife does the cosplay thing too and i see the amount of work that goes into it yeah uh, the, the sweat equity it's actually a fun fact is that uh on jess negri's uh instagram anytime she posts a photo and you see her butt I always comment in all caps, but, <laughs> and then, because Jess is a friend of ours. She's come to our Comic-Con party. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I've hung out with her, her dude. He's, he's super cool. And uh, basically, like, somebody will try and rat me out to Lauren on Instagram, like, tagging her, like, are you, aren't you married? And Lauren's like, I get, I get a photo at Comic-Con every year in our photo booth of her grabbing my tits. Fuck off. 
<laughs> so listen, I'm gonna have to speed up here. Yeah, um, sorry, I, I, I get off. No, no, don't worry, it's, it's not your fault. It's hey, tell you, you what, you can do whatever you want. I, I'm gonna snatch a promise <laughs> from you. Are you gonna come back in the future? Not, not next week, not next month, but just in the future. Can we have like you back? Making, actually, making a game, or are you talking about on the podcast? Not in the podcast. Making a yeah, game, sure. of course, we want you to. Uh, yeah. And and I mean, just I, so I, you know. Just so you know, here in this community, you're fucking royalty, I assure you. Especially this guy, where is he? Above me? <laughs> this guy, I, I don't know if you're watching on Twitch. Are you? Uh, what, me? Yeah. No. Oh, so you don't see him. But this guy over, the, over me, if you go on the Twitch page, uh, when, I, when I told him that you were coming, I promise you he peed a little. He's been, <laughs> he's been silent the whole time now. It's is, is, is like... Is right in the face. Um, no, I mean, so, I'd, I'd be, I mean, you guys, you guys seem like giant ass, assholes, but I'd be happy to come back anyway. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not. Why? Do you want me I to started, ask the some questions? It's it's, it's, it's sarcasm, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the funny thing about like gears and whatnot, and the, the things that I've done in my life. Uh, let me pat myself in the back here. Is that uh, you know so many of the things I've worked on have a huge international following. Like, yeah. you know, Gears being, you know, big in Europe, Gears being big in Mexico. Yeah, really big. Big, super Gears, big. Well, it's, it's actually a fun fact going back real quick to the whole idea of the hero's journey for a second. Yeah. Is that I didn't know about that Joseph Campbell book that, uh, you know, George Lucas had read. And that's yeah. what, partially what inspired, you know, Luke's journey in uh, Star Wars. <laughs> and uh, I actually learned about that book uh, sitting at a bar in Milan, of all places. And uh, this guy who worked in fashion was sitting next to me, and we had a conversation. He told me about the books, so that's why I wound up buying it and reading it. So oh. thanks, Italy. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a little bit of Italy in Gears of War. That's what you're saying? You could say that. Okay. We'll take it. Yeah, we'll take it. My, my, one of my dear friend's uh, family is from Sicily, actually. And she, they make some really good Italian food. Yeah. Well, in Italy, wherever you go, you're pretty much going to eat well. Yeah. There's no I'd wrong place I in Italy. <laughs> I would love to go to Tuscany. Oh, yeah. That's good. So listen, do you ever think about bringing back Unreal or Jack Jazz Rabbit? First off, Epic owns those. Ah. Second off, when I left Epic, I did a final speech and I thanked everybody for working so hard with me, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it was such a crazy hero's journey again. But the thing is, is the last thing I said to them was, you know, because I think Unreal Engine 4 was coming online at that time or four or five. I was like, guys, remake the first Unreal, like, but do it like in the new in the new engine, you know? Because I go back and I look at you know, that game was so hard to make. I'm lucky that I was like in my early 20s and I had the the stamina to you know drink all the Mountain Dew and then sleep nearly under my desk. And uh, it, it was I also beautiful that, back then. Like ex exactly. I remember magazine covers with, yeah. with the polygons going jesus christ what is this oh and then the, like the particle effects and, and yes and, yes and the, the 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 texture detail uh the the size of the maps you know like the the, the huge hubs and then it literally was unreal i did well that was you know i wanted to change i wanted a different name at one point i wanted to call it something like dark earth which is like the most generic video game uh, yeah ever. a little bit yeah <laughs> But Tim Sweeney stuck to his guns. He's like, it needs to be called Unreal. And, uh, you know, the tagline was called, it's called Unreal, because it is. I'm like, a little on the nose, Morty. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is that game had a certain sense of magic to it, right? Yeah. The music, the, the music, the, the the little moments in there, you know, the nollie with the four arms, uh, you know, that, that could help you and, open, and provide power-ups for you. The scar, which are kind of predator-like, but, it, you know, we're were kind of really good AI that could follow you everywhere. And, uh, you know, the intro of the scar, which I'm still proud of that I did to this day where you're in the mine, the lights go out, then the, the strobe lights, that red ones come on and the techno music kicks in and this fucking predator things coming at you that I teased throughout the first level where, you know, you just see a tail go through the, you know, through the hallway. And then, you, you know, you see them briefly running away. And the lesson that I learned from that, is from the movie Alien, where you know you don't show the monster initially, yeah. and I, I I coined the term monster foreplay because um, Stephen King in his book on writing says when the lightning crashes and the door opens and you see 
a 20 foot bug, part of you is relieved because you're expecting 40 foot bug. Yeah. So okay. it's what's up here is always yeah, scarier. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I would love to see a uh, unreal remastered, uh, somebody was willing to do it. Um, I can't remember who they were, but I reached out to Epic and Epic, uh, was like, yeah, we're too busy right now. And I'm like, guys, uh, uh, come on. You gotta, one thing I learned from John Romero, I just read his book. John Romero is one of my heroes and he's a friend. Um, he, I read his book, Doom Guy, which I would highly recommend. You know, D John's embraced his past. And that's my yeah. thing is, you know, acknowledging, you know, I've done, a, uh, I have 60 games I'm credited on, on mobygames.com. But I will ultimately for years, still to many, many people be known as the Gears guy. Yeah. So I mean, one of the lessons fair, you, did, you did go on stage with a fucking chainsaw attached to a, to a shotgun. So, you know, kind of sticks in the mind. Well, it's a, it, you know it was an iconic moment in gaming history. Yeah, yeah. And the the thing is, is uh, and I was a cock, I was a cocky little fucker. Um, <laughs> remind people of your past to guide them towards your future, right? Yeah. It's like the thing is, is like you know, hey, you know that guy you made a game with a, you know a chainsaw and a gun. Uh, well, now he's making a a, a, a cell shaded uh, you know comic book about a dog superhero. They'll be like, what? Yeah. And that's the thing. The thing is, you know, like Eli Roth. Who was known for Hostel and and, and, and Cabin Fever? Yeah. You know, did the Borderlands movie, which yeah. you know I, I don't think there's going to be you know any eyeballs popping out in in, in Borderlands because they probably want to keep it you know PG thirteen. So uh, the thing is, James Gunn, you know, did the movie Slither, which was this amazing uh, you know comedy horror film, and then you know went on to make Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, he comes he comes from trauma, right? James Gunn. That too. Yeah. 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 And that's the thing is, you know, when he he got quote busted for like old tweets where he was making yeah. inappropriate jokes, and then he got canceled, and then you know they're like, wait, what what are we doing here? Like this guy, this guy's really fucking good and talented, and he yeah. he, he, he yeah. knows his shit. The thing about about any IP, be it a game, <clears throat> be it a comic book, be it a anything, is it has to have heart, and that's the thing is, Guardians of the Galaxy. You have a fucking talking tree and a talking raccoon and a a blue girl and a green girl, right? And like, the thing is, it opens with Peter Quill not holding his mother's hand as she dies of cancer, yeah. and then at the at the end, the way that they you know deal with the Infinity Stone and the power of it is they all hold hands, and then you know Groot says, "I'm just about goosebumps." Groot says, <laughs> "Groot says we are Groot," right? And that's yeah. the thing is, you know, you want to you want to go to a movie, you want to feel something. You know, that's the thing about as much as I respect James Cameron and all of his movies and his success, I, I I like the Avatar movies, but I walked out of Avatar 2 and I'm like, I felt nothing. You know, there's yeah, this, uh, I agree. My, ne I agree. My, ne my, ne my next tattoo that I'm getting on Sunday, I don't have detailed ta tattoos. They're very simple, but they're things that mean something to me, like drama and things like that, is, you know, there's this college basketball uh, coach from North Carolina that died of cancer. And he went on stage at the ESPY, SB Awards, and he did this right. speech, and he said, essentially, if you could do three things every day, laugh, think, cry. Oh, I do saw that, I saw it on your Twitter, yeah. Do that seven days a week, you're you're living a good life. And that's kind of my MO. I want to, you know, watch a little stand-up. You know, I want to, you know, learn some new shit. And then I want to be moved. You know, I yeah. want to have some feelings. And it, it goes back to... Okay, I'm, I'm spitting out a little bit. We can stay a little bit longer than four, by the way. Okay. okay. Um, you guys are easy to talk to. Um, <laughs> I've, I've said this before in other interviews. So first off, I'm friends with Karen Gillen, Nebula. Yeah. So, yeah, She. Uh, we had lunch with her when she came to town. She's an absolute sweetheart, beautiful, talented, intelligent. Um, and uh, the thing is, is uh, there's a scene in Doctor Who where they, the, the doctor and her bring Vincent van Gogh uh, to the Musée d'Orsay in Paris, right? Yep. And Vincent struggled to sell a painting his whole life. He was a torture artist. Yeah. And then he sees the gallery of his work and the, the fact that, you know, people are just lining up and just fascinated by it and they, they're, they're moved. And uh, the doctor grabs Bill Nye, not the science guy, the British actor, and says, could you tell me what Vincent, you know, how the impact he had? He said, oh, his work is he's perhaps one of the best. And he was probably a, an amazing man, et cetera. And the actor who looks just like Vincent, you know, starts losing his shit. And then the music starts swelling in the background and the doctor looks over, he's like, are you okay? And, and he's like, Vincent is like, no, they're tears of joy. 
and yeah. then he, he gives him a hug and you realize you know as a creative yeah you know i i do like to eat and and pay my bills but you, you just you just fucking want to know yeah that at the end that of the somebody day somebody appreciates it yeah you made an impact on people i i yeah. was at san diego san diego comic-con doing a signing with my writing partner alex DeCampi on uh scrapper because you know it's, it's really cool actually to be at comic-con with the, an actual comic to promote which is the first time that's happened for me yeah. and then um this woman comes up to me she must have been 50 plus and she starts crying and telling me when she brought her copies of gears and she's like gears of war saved my life and i'm like and then i start fucking crying and then i'm like do you want a hug and she's like yes <laughs> and I, I gave her a hug and the thing is about you know books and movies tv comics is you know you you want to be able to kind of reach through the yeah. screen or you know, the, the i can page. promise you uh, for much of the people in this chat now listen to you are the same they cried they laugh yeah, there's actually, a guy, games. there's actually a you. guy in our in our community. I don't remember the name now, but he mentioned that he Gears helped him through his father's loss. So well, that, well them, it's, that's you beautiful. did a lot. You did Ge a Gears lot. was Gears was in, to some extent partially inspired by the loss of my father, and the irony is Lee Perry, my co-designer, and Rod Ferguson, my producer, lost their fathers at, at an early age as well. And the thing was, is, you know, Marcus believing his father is dead, you know, because his father had to fake his death in order to solve the, the problem that he saw coming of emulsion. Yeah. And then towards the end, when Marcus reunites with him and then, you know, it's just like the Curies who were experimenting with radiation, they experimented and tested on themselves. Yeah. And so that was that was kind of the idea there. But for Marcus to, you know, essentially see his father die twice, you know, I I, I wanted when gears was you know gears one two and three were you know blowing up all i saw the burnt peanuts again mm -hmm. were this is just a dude bro shooter <laughs> and then i for validation you know i'll sometimes you know after a mimosa uh, i'm sorry limoncello okay better i'm i'm got a play to the crowd i'll go to uh i'll go to youtube and i'll look up like you know uh dom killing maria uh uh Dom sacrifice. Spoiler. Spoiler. <laughs> it's been years, man. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I mean, Dom, uh, Mar didn't, didn't play Mar yet. It's your fault. <laughs> Mark, Mar exactly. Marcus killing uh, Mer Queen Mira with Dom's knife. Yeah. Right. That was that was like you know, there's an old writing thing, the Russian playwright uh, Chekhov, where it's he. It's called Chekhov's gun. The Chekhov, says, yeah. If there's a gun yeah, on the it, stage, it's got to be used at some point exactly and that was you know the, the moment when like you know one of the valves was stuck and dom yeah. gives his commando knife to marcus but he doesn't give it back and then i was like yeah we know where we're going with this right you want to know what was my moment in gears when the recruit gets shot in the head right at the beginning yeah that for me was like, oh shit this shit is real like shit's getting real that could be me that that, that was my thinking like i'm not gonna I, be I, one I, of those giant dudes i'm gonna be that one <laughs> I, lo I love the whole the fact that we use the death of a cute character to teach you about active reload. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But speaking of speaking of the car mines, is you know my wife has a, a theory like you know I love Batman. Mm -hmm. You know the thing she says she she prefers Robin because her theory is not everybody can be Batman. No. True. Then I'm like I'm the goddamn Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you guys the Lego Batman story? Of nope. course. Uh, okay, so a girlfriend of ours is dating a tattoo artist, really cool dude, really talented, and it turns out he has a tattoo on his dick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> of, of Lego Batman. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. I feel I heard this story on your comedy special. Yes, yes. That, okay. that, <laughs> I'll let you play. <laughs> that, that, that he did himself. <laughs> Now, I have questions. So apparently he did have to be um, <clears throat> in the mood while he was right. doing it. And I'm like, D is this guy, like, did he just, like, grind up a, a bunch of Viagra in a mortal <laughs> pedestal and just, like, snort it? Like, and it's, it's like, like, 
when he when he hooks up with our, our girlfriend, does he say like pulls off her panties and goes, "Where is she?" <laughs> does he go, "Time to enter the bat cave." <laughs> And if he pulls out sex toys with her, does he go, where does he get those wonderful toys? You know? <laughs> <laughs> that joke didn't land, though. <laughs> I think oh it was still a little, bit too, a little bit too edgy for Raleigh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, like, I kind of want to see it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> when, when, when he's soft, is, is, does he look like he's crouching? Like, when he's hard, does he look like he's like doing this? Like, yeah. 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 When, when he's soft, he looks like Thomas Wayne. He's just a little bit, little bit older, you know. Seriously. And the moment it unfolds. <laughs> Listen, uh, I, I have a curiosity of mine. Are you are you in good terms with, with Tim Sweeney? I could email Tim tomorrow and go to lunch. Okay. Yeah, I was actually supposed to go to a Hurricanes game with uh, Mark Rain uh, about a month ago, but um, uh, the missus wasn't feeling so hot. Okay. Um, but you know, I, I hug Mark whenever I see him. Uh, Tim, I wrote, I wrote, wrote about this in my book. Tim, in many ways, Tim and Mark were father figures to some extent yeah. to me. And you know, because I lost my dad two years prior, I contacted them when I was 17 years old, and uh, they kind of helped guide me through a lot of things. Um, and then I was willing to, you know. Uh, as uh, you know, Christopher Molasanti said to Tony Soprano, I will go to hell for that man. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I worked my fucking ass off for that company and I was fairly compensated. Um, a little bit more would have been nice, but you know, yeah, I, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to latch on to that because I have questions also from, from developers from Epic. Okay. Like I have my contacts. So there is the question. There was a there was a big influx of money at some point during the year's time, and all of a sudden, the, the Epic parking lot was all Porsches. So <laughs> he, he says, "I bet there are some cool, funny stories about that." This happened uh, again on Fortnite, by the way. He said, "Yeah, I bet." Um, the thing is, is uh, I uh, oh, what's a good way of putting it? Um, I didn't know how or where to buy a Lamborghini. Okay. So Mark Rain knew a guy named Anand. He had a website called Anand Tech, and he figured out the, how to game the system for page page clicks and page views. He yeah. had a, he had a Ferrari and a Lamborghini. So I I had met the dude before. I didn't know he had done that well. I go up to his big McMansion, which ironically is it's not too far from our house. This Anand guy, <laughs> and I, I take his Lambo for a test drive, and he taught me that you know it, it was a paddle shifter, right? Yeah. That you know, if you downshift when you're going underneath an overpass, the the sound that it makes sounds like a fighter jet. So like, I, I, I was like, <laughs> right. And uh, also, the first time I drove a Lamborghini was actually uh, for the MTV special that we did for Gears One, yep. where I, um, I I borrowed Tim Sweeney's Lamborghini. And the the thing was is you know I went to this uh, the pub that actually has the beers of war uh, plate. It's called the Flying Saucer in downtown Raleigh. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, is that, you know, it has my name on it and everything. Uh, and I, the, the parking lot was very steep. And this is before the powers that be at Lamborghini figured out to put a button in to raise the front up by like okay. four inches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there, there's people watch, walking by, like looking at the car because this is kind of like the party district, right? And they I, I, like scrape the shit out of it. And then um, they're like, uh, and then uh, I, I brought it back to Tim, and uh, I never told him. <laughs> <laughs> but you did now. Man, you would have taken it out of my bonuses, man. <laughs> so, listen, I have another one from the devs. Uh, there's there's a little climbing wall at HQ, so they want to know how many people got hurt on that if you were there I, when it got installed. More people got hurt in the slide than the climbing wall. Okay. <laughs> slide. Okay. <laughs> the slide. Oh, <laughs> Oh well, the, sl the sl do you remember the uh, the scene in the the classic movie uh, Christmas Vacation, where Chevy Chase takes that disc and he sprays like yes you know, okay like, like like lube in the bottom that goes Phew! yes I mean that that was how the first version of the slide was, and so <laughs> people are almost breaking their tailbones coming off the thing, and so I mean that's a liability at some point right? <laughs> but you know, you installing that like uh, a, a climbing wall a slide like that's that, that was Tim you know okay. Tim wanted to install a Tim wanted to install a fireman's pole in his house, but the like, code, code, <laughs> code, oh, code, code wouldn't let him do it. Another another fun fact about Tim is he owns uh, several several of the world's largest geode stones. You know the ones where they yeah. cut it and it's all yeah. 
they're like literally like six feet plus tall. Wow. And I was at a, par- oh a party, at, a party at Tim's house once, and somebody said, "I think that's the pod that Tim arrived to, to, to Earth in." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tim's a character, man. The thing is, is you know, Epic is his. It's his. It, you know, as they say with Pokemon, that to train them is my cause, right? Pokemon. Um, he wants. He wants. You know, essentially world domination. And um, <laughs> so he's a super villain, basically. <laughs> Think For a moment in this decade is <laughs> think about, I mean, that's, quite that, near. That's his, that's, that's his life purpose, you know. For what I know about his personal life, I don't think he's married. Um, I just think he's just laser focused on <laughs> on on his baby, which is epic. And okay. I respect him for that. You, you think about the stones of him. I think like you know the stones of me to be able to go on stage in front of like sixty people mm-hmm. and do stand up comedy. Now the stones of him to like take on Apple. Like no. Jesus Christ, man! <laughs> so it's uh, he's uh, as uh, Mark Rain always said, he's the smartest guy in the room. And the 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 other adage is, if you're the smartest guy in the room, you need to be in a better room. Yeah. Ooh, I like yeah. that. Another question is, is there something or is there anything holding you back from joining the coalition and working on Gears again? Money. I would uh, again. I would consult. <laughs> Um, I don't. I don't want to be, do the full time thing these days. You know, yeah. I, I I love like one of the reasons I loved when I was working at Epic was you know Gears was my primary focus, but then I'd get a build of Infinity Blade, and I'd okay. be like, oh Donald, what what can we do with this? And then I get a build of Bullet Storm, and I'd be like, oh, how about acting cat acting cactuses that you could kick people into, right? Uh, you know, I I had you know, and then also I'd have to do a million interviews, so like I was wearing like six hats. At one point yeah and i mean you know imagine like you know working your butt off on various video games and then having to you know do numerous interviews having to do e3 having to do uh you know packs having to do, do dice and all that uh it's amazing i wasn't a cocaine addict or something like that um, so the media but, media obligation were a big were a big hurdle like that oh yeah yeah uh, well i learned uh, you know dana cowley who's still there she's a uh, this wonderful smart uh woman who doesn't fucking age um, I, I had drinks there. I had drinks there like six months back. She's just hilarious. Um, she had so much going on that, you know, she wouldn't always tell me when I would do, have somebody there to do an on-camera interview. Yeah. And so I learned to basically like, you know, I didn't want to be a neck beard. Right. So I, I had to keep this trimmed You know, I had to keep everything clean. You know, I had to, you know, put on the under eye going back to the, the, the cream to, to do on camera, put on a nice shirt every day and, uh, be prepared, you know, yeah. get my triple, triple latte. And, uh, you know, rocket. Always and, uh, ready on the spot. Well, that's, that's the thing is, you know, I was a big a big drama nerd in high school, again, going back to the tattoo. Yeah. You know, I have no problem being in front of a crowd. I actually crave it. Yeah. You know, when I do, I go to a, a random bar for karaoke, and there's only like six people. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, those those little rooms they have in, like, Asia, like, I, I fucking hate them. It's like, I'm, I, I could sing in front of my friends in my living room instead. Like, yeah. what's the point of this? Yeah, but like whenever I go to a place and it's just slammed, I'm like, and I read the room, right? I'm like, okay, if there's a lot of white girls, it's time for Mr. Brightside. Or... <laughs> <laughs> Going out of my cage and I've been doing just fine. Guy. Or it's time for a... I love killers too. <laughs> oh, who doesn't? Or it, it's time for a Before He Cheats by Carrie Underwood. Um, and then if it's a predominantly African American crowd, it sounds cliche, but uh, you know, do a little hip hop. And okay. uh, don't say the word, of course. Um, <laughs> and if it's if it's a gay bar, are you working gay? towards your pass for that? Uh, like you do no. enough hip hop? No, okay. No. <laughs> dude, I'm fr- I'm friends with Ice Fucking T, dude. Like, well, my, my wife actually plays online games with Ice T's son. I, wow. I think she's actually on a server with him doing the GTA role playing. Have you seen this shit, by the way? No. Mm. It's this Sometimes. mod for G- GTA Online where. These people get together and they they play they literally like stay in character on voice comms. They oh no, as- I saw the GT, GTA RP. I didn't see that one you mentioned with Ice T's son. Oh yeah, but the, the GTA RP is is yeah, so it's fucking crazy. it's brilliant. But the guys that developed the mod are now in the in the actual team for GTA Six. Yeah, I heard that, and I hope so, they got fu- yeah. I hope they I hope they got fuck you money. Yeah, I hope they get paid. That's, that's, they what, that's, that's, that's what I tell people about the gaming industry. Unless you want to do this for the rest of your life, yeah, 
get fuck you money and then get the fuck get out. the money because and run yeah, yeah, there, yeah there are so many developers i've known who go gray at an early age it was like when obama first went in office oh my god oh hair. my god yes <laughs> that that really has I, you got a little bit of a gray right there and a couple of you do but i i i, I occasionally if one comes in i take my razor i'm not not today satan no no i cherish them i cherish them it's wisdom well, yeah, yeah, that's that's. Look at me, Cliff. <laughs> I'm fucking Santa. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, as a dude, you know, like if you can grow a solid beard like you did, you know, do the shave the head, you know, it's a it's a cool look, right? <laughs> yes, very sexy. <laughs> so I have one last question that I'm gonna let you go. If you were consulting today for gears, what would you change? Because gears redefined the genre back when it came out, basically. So today, to to do the same thing in current times, what would you what would you change, or maybe what what's the right way to to develop a new gears? I would do a DLC to wrap up the loose end uh, storytelling parts of uh, Gears Five, and okay. then I'd re I'd reboot it, uh, right. much like much like God of War got rebooted. Uh, okay. Some of the ideas, the free so, ideas. Wait, so you mean soft reboot? Yeah, I mean, you know, don't completely get rid of everything, but you know, God of War, you know, they, they it, it was, you know, they they rebooted it just enough so it well, it felt familiar yet different, right? Yeah. There's this book too, that I love. Too about. different. Right, this book called <laughs> well, this this book called Hitmakers, right? And it's basically, it, it says in order to make something successful take something that people already know and vibe with and then make it feel fresh and new and like the whole joke that i've been saying in prior interviews is mandalorian is just a fucking western oh like, yeah it's the sci-fi twist on it oh right? pal world i mean it's conan exactly. exiles but with pokemons <laughs> well i love i love uh, the, the pokemon company and nintendo's like you know like thinly veiled threat letter like hey nice game you have there shame, <laughs> yeah. shame is something were to happen to it it's um, a me the mario brown here yeah. <laughs> i'm a better game like to see mario with a chainsaw <laughs> at I mean, some point in time <laughs> the thing is, is there's so much they could do with the franchise uh i've always said the decision at the end of five i think was fucking stupid uh, they okay. painted themselves into a narrative corner dom's death mattered because dom fucking died and okay. that they and we stuck to it um the thing is also um and by the way i have word that that uh that decision was hotly debated which as it rightfully should have been um you, you know what can you things, expand on that part uh, that's all i can say right now yeah, okay um okay. Uh, you know i don't want to betray the circle of trust um the thing is is you know phil spencer said to the gears team you know he, he wanted to get more of the horror elements back in from gears one you know the berserker coming out out of nowhere uh the wretches you know yeah. like that the the scary rainy scenes and things like that that cycle of fear and then empowerment right and so you know the idea that i had and again microsoft first one's free is to do an emergence day uh game where you know, go go back to the beginning mm -hmm. and basically have one of the one of the delta squad characters uh and then they they're dealing with the chaos of it all right yeah you, you can have all the spectacle you want but then you alternate between that and just a little kid and okay. a little kid who's just confused and scared it's like if joel and ellie were permanently separated in the last of us right okay. and then you know towards the end the kid eventually starts gets a gun you know sloppily you know kills his first locust and it's it's a it's a tough fight yeah. then you know towards the tail end the kid finally do, uh, does his first chainsaw kill and then that, that's his, his hero's journey is or he or she their hero's journey is to become a you know a cog and then meanwhile you're dealing with the person uh, on the other side you know maybe maybe a member of delta squad whatever um and you know maybe you're a new character and you know maybe they die at the end and so it's you know out with the old and with the new like yeah. you know narrative structure right and, you know the thing is is you know all the cool monsters of the underground the 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 hollow is a, <laughs> a thinly veiled metaphor for the ocean because you know it's it feels like every other week there's a new creature that we find at the bottom of the ocean right yeah uh, it, okay. it, provided you're not going down in a cheap sub submersible powered oh, by, yeah. powered <laughs> by a, log oh, a, log yeah. a, log a logitech controller <laughs> jesus imagine that one minute you're like i'm rich and we're the deep sea and then, <laughs> just done anyway that's uh the first one's free again well thanks for having me guys